A wise man learns from the mistakes of others, was told to me many, many years ago. And I got two stories here that I think everyone would learn a lot from. Hey everybody, it's John at Contract Diagnostics and a message today on lessons. Two recent folks that we've worked with. One, I'll, 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 I'll kind of set brief frames for each of them and then tell the story and then kind of recap what, uh, what we wish they would have done differently. So one of our clients came to us and had a position, found a new position and had us negotiate her new contract. She said, I've, I know how to leave my current job. I don't need anything for you guys to look at. We didn't look at her first agreement. So we, we knew that she had a job. She told us that she had to give a notice period to terminate and that she had tail insurance and the non-compete was irrelevant because it was a few states away. So we spent time negotiating a new contract for her. Of course, we dug into it. We found all the nuances that were important to her. We communicated with the employer, helped her conduct the due diligence. We increased her base salary for the second and third year and her signing bonus that was up front. We were able to get her a relocation bonus. There was not one in the contract and uh, discussed lots of things around clarity, around benefits and call obligations and everything else in that contract. And she felt really good about that position. And then she went to terminate the job that she was in and she ran into a hiccup. Now the hiccup wasn't around the non-compete. Again, it was irrelevant. She was moving states away. The, 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 the hiccup was not around tail insurance. It was fully covered for this physician. So she didn't have to buy a tail and come out of pocket, you know, 10 to hundreds of thousands of dollars to leave the position. It was about her bonus. Now she knew that she had to give the notice period of 90 days, but part of the policy manual that she didn't have reviewed up front talked about how many months per year you need to be employed to earn the bonus. Even if you've rightfully earned it, you've seen the patients, you've produced the RVUs, by all means, they should pay and they owe you the bonus dollars. But based on her start date at her new contract, based on when she had terminated her previous, her current contract, she was ineligible for the bonus dollars. And it wasn't insignificant. It was quite a bit of money approaching $100,000. So this is a lesson to everybody, not just to have your next contract reviewed, but understand your current contract. Even if you had it reviewed two years, three years, four years ago, understand what the policies are, understand what the termination pay looks like. If you took great notes, fantastic, review them. Policies change for employers and there might be an amendment to your contract that wasn't in your initial reviewers um, communications with you or the notes that you took. So it's important to have your contract reviewed for a termination as well as your next contract as you go and integrate into that new position. And that's one story that you know either the physician won, they found a position, they started looking at homes, they had us negotiate a great deal and now they've either got to turn that down and stay at their job because of the dollars or they've got to turn down the dollars that they've rightfully earned for the new opportunity that they and their family were super excited for. Now the other learning that we have today has nothing to do with terminating a contract uh, that you're currently part of. This physician wants to get out of his current contract and he's having an issue doing so. Now, when we go back, we worked with him on his contract that he signed. And a month before he was supposed to start the hospital, I'm sorry, the private practice, offered him half of his salary to be covered by the hospital. He said, I don't want that. I don't want the risk. We went over the deal with him. And at the end of the day, he ended up taking it because he didn't want to take half the salary. He was about to have the birth of his first son. And he had already convinced his family that they were integrating into this town. So he took the hospital's offer, taking responsibility for half of his high salary. This physician was a cardiologist, even though we told him this has a lot of risk on you. And if you don't like this position, you might have to pay some money back or continue to work in an area that you don't want to work in until whatever debt is paid off based on the hospital recruitment guarantee. But he didn't want to deal with it. His son was being born and he just wanted his first job and he'd already lost out a couple of other opportunities because he signed this one. And again, this was like a last minute kind of not really a trick, I think by the employer, but I thought disrespectful to him because they didn't disclose all these nuances to the deal. So he ends up signing this recruitment agreement, integrating his family there. We get an email from him today. It's not the job he wants. 
the pace is too hectic. He doesn't get to see his son enough and he's unhappy with the position. So now he's looking to unwind this deal that we cautioned him on and he rushed into because it was just bad timing to pivot to do something else. So he, we haven't looked at everything yet, but he might have a delta. He might owe a year of two or three years of service to this organization in this community that he doesn't like, in this job he doesn't appreciate, or he may owe them 80,000, 100,000 or more dollars to repay a portion of his income that was supported and supplemented by the hospital on a recruitment guarantee. So now this physician is going to have a potential a challenge, right? Stay in a job that he doesn't like with his family who doesn't appreciate it there or pay back quite a bit of money or see if another employer could cover that note. Now he's already looking at jobs. We're going to help him transition through the process. And it's something that will be handled um, with both ends, right? On a very cautious, a very careful perspective. But I tell you these two stories because it's important on what you guys sign. It's important to understand all the nuances, both the risk if you want to leave or the repayment of a bonus dollar that you may have earned rightfully if and when you do take off and go somewhere else. It's important to understand the end to the job, right? The money, the benefits, the schedule, all the exciting things that you sign for, but it's important to plan for the exit because a lot of transitions happen and people usually don't think that they're going to, but it's important to know the what ifs. How do I get out of this if I want to? What's the risk on me if I need to get out of this contract? What happens? What, do we, what does it cost me? What kind of notice do I need? And those are things that's important to have. Whether you didn't have your current contract looked at and you're looking at transitioning, it's important to know those things. Even spending a few hundred dollars to have a service look at the contract and just give you some basic guides and advice on where to write a letter to, what kind of notice, what your obligations are, and what policies you should make sure you go back and read. If we can learn from the mistakes of others, let's learn from these two physicians who made big mistakes. And I know they're learning and I think they wish they would have learned from others as well. So hopefully these two stories have, uh, have helped you understand that these contracts are not just simply easy things to sign and look at the dollar amount. They're complicated transactional things that can, that can take months to go through, that can cost hundreds of thousands of dollars, and they can create a lot of stress and pain on a relationship and a family and a career. So if we can help with anything, of course, reach out. I'm John at Contract Diagnostics, and this is what we do all day.